Good morning. The Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Today is Pentecost, and at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is given because Jesus has been glorified in his death and in his resurrection. And at Pentecost, Peter preached the same message as the prophet Joel. And the message of the prophet Joel is saying that in the last days, the Spirit brings the same word as the prophets to the apostles. So the work of Jesus continues in these last days. We open with our opening hymn, Hail Thee Festival Day.
the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. For his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it all. When you open your hand, they are filled with all things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
be with you. Let us pray. O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the day of Pentecost is from Numbers chapter 11. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered because they had not gone out to the tent, so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, my Lord Moses stopped them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. With the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. The second reading, the epistle, is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each of them was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood 
and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. You, On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of our Lord.
Pentecost. It means 50th, the 50th day after Jesus' death and resurrection. Just 10 days prior, our Lord Jesus Christ had ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father, and now he sends his Spirit for his apostles to continue his work in these last days. Pentecost is the culmination of what the evangelist John was saying. The Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. But now Jesus has now gloriously conquered death and the grave, and the time is ripe for the giving of the Spirit. Just as the word of the Lord came to Joel and said, And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. The Spirit was poured out on Pentecost because Jesus had been glorified by his rising from the grave. Peter preached the same promise of salvation as the prophet Joel. Salvation for you, for your children, and for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, whom he raised from the dead. Now when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. The multitude of devout men from every nation under heaven was already gathered for this festival day. They were not aware that the Holy Spirit will, was going to be poured out on them then. No, they had come to celebrate the Passover, when the angel of the Lord had passed over the Israelites' bloody wooden crossbeams. Due to the distance one had to travel, until the festival of weeks, they would stay there until the 50th day. And at the festival of weeks, they would celebrate the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. At Pentecost, the Jews celebrated and gave thanks for all that God had done for them in creating the world, in making his covenant with them, and recording his steadfast mercy to them in the mouths of the prophets. So if the Lord's Passover was a remembrance of the greatest salvific event of the Old Testament, then the Pentecost was the thanksgiving for the faithful Old Testament prophets who proclaimed this, the Lord's Exodus, in the scriptures. As you heard from today's reading in Numbers, 70 Israelites received the spirit of holiness, and as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, just as later prophets would, Elijah, Ezekiel, Joel, even John the Baptist. Every time God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, there's a mention of the Spirit. God breathes the breath of life into man, and the Spirit gives breath to the Word. When the Word of the Lord came to Isaiah, or to Joel, or to whomever, the Spirit told him what to speak. The Spirit might appear as the mighty sound of thunder, or for Ezekiel, as the voice of an earthquake. When the prophets spoke, the Spirit was nearby in their breath or on the wind, so they would prophesy the mighty works of God. So the Lord's uh, apostles had gathered to hear the Lord's promises, and they heard the same great sound that the prophets heard a sound like a mighty rushing wind. What's more, the tongues of fire appeared and rested on each of the apostles, exactly as the prophet John the Baptist had prophesied, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Today, this scripture was fulfilled in the apostles' hearing, and their mouths were filled with other languages, just as the Lord spoke through the mouth of Balaam's donkey, so what's marvelous is not so much that they began to speak in other tongues. It's marvelous because the apostles understand that the Lord is sending them with the same authority which he gave to his prophets to prophesy and preach the word of the Lord. Just as the crowd said, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. When the apostles were all filled with the Holy Spirit, they were enabled by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the mighty works of God, that is, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
Now, Jesus had certainly done other mighty works during his temporal ministry, works of healing, works of feeding, and even works of casting out demons. Some bystanders thought that this Pentecost was another show of God's sovereignty rather than a shining of his life-giving grace. The primary work of Jesus is his death in the place of sinners, sinners who would rather enjoy sideshow miracles. Everyone in that crowd was bewildered, amazed, perplexed. But Pentecost wasn't marvelous merely because this was God's surround sound or his pyrotechnics. No, Jesus chided his onlookers for ogling his miracles as if he was some sort of circus magician. Preaching the crucifixion of Jesus in tongues of fire does not call for saying, wow, what a show, as if it was some sort of performance. So the answer answer to the crowd's catechetical question, what does this mean, is easy. Are they filled with new wine? No. But the greater miracle is the new wine of Christ's blood poured out for them. The same great rushing wind that pointed the prophets forward to Jesus also directed the apostles to proclaim Jesus' deeds, his mighty works. The same fire that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah was now in the mouths of the Lord's apostles, building up the church rather than tearing down Sodom and Gomorrah. The Spirit gave them tongues of fire to speak about the life of Jesus and the life that he brings. As if to say, Pay attention to these guys, the ones with Jesus. So these signs of flame and sound given for the apostles to do are not a thing in themselves, but they act as pointers to the crucified and risen God-man. Pentecost isn't about the church doing signs, but it's about the church receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost is about Jesus' giving of the Spirit to the church and everything that the Holy Spirit does for the church each and every Sunday. Jesus had already foretold the giving of his Spirit when he told what the Helper would do. Jesus knows that he's going to go to the cross and triumph over it gloriously, just as he tells his disciples, It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Jesus sends the Holy Spirit to his church in order to deliver the gifts he won by his blood. Every time we speak of the Holy Spirit, we speak of Jesus. The Trinity is inseparable, and so where Jesus works, the Holy Spirit works also. The Holy Spirit is first poured out on humanity at the baptism of Jesus where Jesus receives the Holy Spirit on behalf of humanity. The Spirit remains with Jesus throughout his earthly ministry, and as he dies on the cross, Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his Spirit, saying, It is finished. So in this humble sacrifice, Jesus is glorified, and the Spirit distributes these fruits of the crucifixion. Just as today's gospel reading says, those believing in Jesus would receive the Spirit, and from the Spirit flow rivers of living water. It's the same water that gives eternal life when water and blood pour from Christ's side. And in the same water, Christians call on the name of the Lord and are saved. So Jesus works by offering himself up as living water for us Christians to drink. He says, everyone who drinks of the water that I will give will never be thirsty again. And in today's gospel reading, Jesus indeed invites us by saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me, as well as let whoever believes in me drink. He is the very water welling up to eternal life. And he sends his spirit to nourish us with these goods. This is to fulfill what the prophet Isaiah says, what he had prophesied, that God would satisfy the thirst of his people. So, on Pentecost, Peter preached the fulfillment of what the prophet Joel had prophesied, 
that the Spirit would be poured out on God's people, that signs and wonders would inaugurate the last days of the church, and that whoever calls on the name of the Lord would be saved. And we are now in the last days of the church. Every Sunday until the day of the Lord is Pentecost, because the glorified Jesus has sent his Spirit in his name and has given us the name of the Lord in holy baptism. The church owns the franchise on eternal life and forgiveness of sin. Jesus declares, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me, and let whoever believes in me drink. On this festival day, this blessed festival day, and on every Lord's day, we can sing with joy, come Holy Ghost, God and Lord, because Jesus has given us water which quenches all thirst in holy baptism. Not until all prophecies were fulfilled at his crucifixion was he glorified. The Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. But by the Pentecost, Jesus had indeed been glorified by his humble corpus laid across the blood-stained cross. So indeed, the Spirit was poured out at Pentecost because Jesus had risen from the grave. And so we too will rise with him in the resurrection enjoying eternal life, which the word of his name brings in the water. The name by which he has called us his church, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and confess our Christian faith this week using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you delivered your word through Moses and the prophets and fulfilled your word in Christ. He was planted in death for our sins and raised for our justification. And he has sent the promised comforter that we and all who call upon him shall be saved. Give us pastors who will preach this word faithfully and church workers who are devoted to your service. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, in Christ you have given us the water that quenches all thirst and poured out eternal life on us by the Holy Spirit. We give thanks to you for the new life that you've given to Skyla Ray, daughter of Chelsea and Landon Ternay. Grant her eternal life through the waters of holy baptism and keep us all safe in continual hearing of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you have ordered all things in heaven and on earth. Bless Donald, our president, Eric, our governor, the Congress of these United States, and all elected and appointed civil servants. We pray, dear Lord, that you would bring an end to the violence that has spread across our cities in America and bring peace and your wholeness to all families who are suffering. We ask, Lord, that in your justice that you would bring uh, great confidence in our leadership of our nation and pray for uh, continued peace throughout this, this nation. Grant godly legislation that protects the weak and preserve life from conception to its natural end and to sustain peace for the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy. 
Almighty God, have mercy and spare us. Put an end to the pandemic. Restore communities of this world to have common life. Lord God, you carry the burdens of our lives in your hands. Deliver from illness and suffering all who cry to you for release. Hear us on behalf of the sick, the dying, and those who mourn. We pray especially this day for Mark Blodgett. Answer your people, O Lord, and deliver them from their infirmities and from their grief. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you have given our nation the gift and heritage of freedom. It came at the cost of many lives on battlefields far and near. Receive our thanks for their sacrifice. Give us the courage to preserve liberty and pursue godly virtue and use it honorably. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, your word endures forever. Give us grace so that we may be united in doctrine and fellowship at your table, confessing Christ boldly and living together in faith and love until our Lord returns in all his glory to bring all things to their appointed completion when we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, hear your people for the sake of him who loved us even unto death and who lives and calls himself Uh, calls to himself all to be saved. You know what we need and those things that we should ask for in your name. Grant them to us for the sake of our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Continue with the offertory. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and is sitting at your right hand and poured out on this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. For all this the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven. We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body, his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. body of Christ for you.
stand. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you to everlasting life. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Oh, it is a joy to be back and a joy to hear such a fine sermon. Thank you so much. Matt, how you've matured and do such a marvelous job. Very proud and very excited to hear of how... Uh, your vicarage goes and how things uh, progress for you and your family. Are there any announcements that need to be shared? Well, I've missed you and it's good to be back and thank you so much for, for really bringing it on the hymns. These are some great hymns. <laughs> so I really enjoy the gusto with which we sing. We'll close with our final hymn. 